book of Titus chapter 3. Yeah. Sure. Do you realize where we once was? Mm. And do you realize what hope we have now? Amen. Just to be able to feel the presence of God Almighty Himself yeah. come down in my soul. Mm. I feel like I need to shout something. <laughs> worried about you, brother. I, 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 I tell him all the time, I feel like he's just not, he's, he's, he just doesn't get excited enough, you know. No, thank you for that word. Amen. And uh, today has been a wonderful day. Uh, I, not saying every Sunday's not special, but there does seem to be something very special today. So if you have your Bibles there, the book of Titus chapter 3, and uh, just wanted to mention a few things very quickly uh, while you're turning there. Of course, uh, in our video, they're talking about uh, the Hoosier One. And uh, I hope that by now everyone's had an opportunity to pray and to ask God to lay uh, some person on your heart uh, that you can be praying for in a special way. And uh, hopefully uh, there will be an opportunity at some point in the future to be able to share your faith uh, with that individual. Uh, Nathan Thurman, actually, if you uh, go out here into the, um, the, the open section there outside of the Family Life Center and the, uh, the youth building there, uh, you'll see we have a, a, a new board that is up that uh, Nathan built and just really praise God uh, for him taking the time to do that. But we're going to actually take the tags um, that everybody's written on and put the name of their one, and we're going to be putting them up on that board. And uh, so if you ever get a chance before you leave to go by and look at that, he just did a phenomenal uh, job and it will be exciting to just see the names going up on that board. And I would just encourage you as you walk by the board, you know, maybe just stop and, you know, if you don't have a whole lot of time to pray for people specifically, you know, pray for everybody. I do believe God will honor that. But if you you know, can even look up there and just maybe see one name, you know, on one of the tags that's up there and just pray for that person, you know, it would be exciting. And uh, if you haven't had a chance yet to choose who your one is, just uh, out here on the board, there's a ledge, and we have, of course, the 30-day uh, the prayer guides, and then we have the bookmarks there where you can uh, write your person on there, tear it off. You can either drop it, I think there's like a little bowl or something there, or you can put it in one of the offering receptacles, and we'll make sure to get that and uh, that'll go up on the board. So just wanted to share that with you. And then, of course, uh, I apologize, your, your bulletin turned into a book this morning. Uh, but uh, we do have quite a few things that are coming up, which is actually a good thing, amen? Uh, God's doing things, and it's exciting to see what the Lord is doing in our church. Of course, this coming Wednesday night, uh, we have the, um, the new Bible study, The Signs. And uh, this was put in as a reminder, and, uh, uh, but also... Uh, use that or feel free to use that as an invitation. And if you know somebody who you think might be interested in coming out for a Bible study, and especially one that's dealing with the end times, uh, just give this to them. And, uh, of course, that will act as an invitation, and uh, maybe they would be willing to come for that. And that will start this coming uh, Wednesday night. We'll meet right over here uh, on this, uh, this wing of the uh, sanctuary. So that will be at 6 o'clock. And then don't forget our Adventures in Marriage, uh, the, uh, the conference that's coming up. And that's going to be uh, here at the end of the month, uh, the 29th and the 30th. But uh, as was said before, it will be here before you know it. And so uh, I just want to encourage you, if you're planning to come to the marriage conference, uh, I know I've had a number of people who come to me and say, oh, pastor, we're planning to be there. 
that's good, but we need you to sign up <laughs> uh, because we need to know how to plan, especially for, you know, refreshments and things like that. Uh, we need to know how to plan. And so if you could just, uh, if you're planning to go, if you would make sure before you leave today, you can do it a couple of, of ways. Um, in, the, uh, in the foyer, there's a sign-up sheet, and if you want to sign up there, uh, you can do uh, that. And then, you know, uh, at the, you know, when you actually, you know, come for the conference, if you are going to pay the, the, uh, the, the $129 for that, you can do that there. The other thing is um, on the website. If you go on our website, hellsford.com, right in the menu bar, right along the top there, you'll see um, where it says marriage conference. If you just click on it, it will take you directly to the registration page. It, it has some description there about the class, but then it has the registration, and you can sign up there. And I just wanted to mention this as well, um, because I actually, uh, this week, I, we, had, we had a couple in the church who had said, uh, Pastor, um, we don't want anybody in the church not to be able to go for financial reasons, so whoever is not able uh, to go, maybe it just isn't working out for their budget or whatever, um, you know, we, uh, we want to help out with that. And so... Um, that was exciting to hear that. Well, I, had, I have another couple that has basically come and, and said the same thing uh, in the church. So if you want to go, please sign up. And if, you know, again, if finances is an issue, please don't worry about it. It'll be taken care of. Um, if you, uh, we're, we're actually having something changed on the registration page now where there will be an option for uh, scholarship. And, and you just check that option, you know, just say we'd like to exercise the, the, the scholarship option and it will be taken care of, okay? So either sign up online or sign up in the foyer, but if you're planning to come, please uh, do that today so that we can have a good idea of, you know, who all is going to be there and so that we can plan accordingly. And again, as I said uh, last week with our seniors, uh, you might be saying, well, you know, we've been married 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. You know, 60 years, and uh, there's, there's been some that have been married for longer than that. And uh, that's awesome, uh, but, but you need to come, okay? If anything, to show us younger whippersnappers, you know, how we're supposed to do it, you know. Uh, you know but, but seriously, it, what, it, what it says to the younger couples is, wow, if, if there's a couple here and they've been married for that long and they're coming, and they think it's that important, then, then we should go too. And it's a wonderful example uh, to our younger couples as well. So please do uh, come, okay? And then finally, uh, let me just say, um, I got a text during the Sunday school hour from Scott Dreyer, and he just wanted to let me know uh, that, you know, Ken is continuing to do very well. But he said, um, he said uh, last Wednesday, you know, he, we almost lost him. He, he almost left this earth. And, uh, but uh, he's doing well now. So just continue to pray for his recovery. Uh, but the family is just very thankful for this church and very thankful for your prayers. So just wanted to mention that. So Titus chapter 3, and let's go to the Lord in prayer as we begin. Father, thank you for your goodness to us. And uh, thank you for the worship time that we've already enjoyed today. Thank you for uh, just the opportunity to sing your praises. And Lord, now we come to the place in the service where we open your word. And Lord, we seek to glean from it. Holy Spirit of God, we just pray that you would take uh, this word, that you would apply it to our hearts and bring us to a place of decision and then empower us to make the decisions that we need to make so that we can be conformed to the image of Christ. God, we love you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And so as I was thinking about the, the message and how to start... Um, the thought kind of came to me that, um, you know, our lives are, are busy lives. Uh, you know, we are very busy uh, today, and, and sometimes we, we get so caught up in the busyness of life that we miss a lot. But every now and then, something happens that gets our attention and we wake up from the busyness, from the routine, if, if just for a little while, and we are uh, made aware of a, a world of wonders. 
Maybe you know someone who recently passed away and you thought to yourself, it's too soon. It just seems so soon that, that this, per- this person would pass away and, and it made you wonder about the afterlife. Maybe you happened to look up at the stars one night and you wondered about the vastness of all and how all of that could possibly come into being. Maybe you've looked at nature and the different systems and parts of the human body and you've wondered how in the world could uh, any of those things ever happen by accident the way that the world tries to tell us it happened by accident. And we know that's not true. You see, there's nothing wrong with wondering because wondering opens our eyes to the possibilities of God and the possibilities of his miracles. And over the next several weeks, we're going to be looking at seven wonders in particular. And in the course of this series, we will be looking at questions like, is there a God? Am I unique? Why does life seem to be so unfair? Why do so many people struggle with feelings of loneliness? Why is it so hard to do what I know I should do? And is there life after death? And so as I've said uh, before regarding this series, we're going to be dealing with questions that lost people are asking, people who don't know the Lord. But you might say, well, Pastor, what about me? If, if I'm a believer and I, I do know the Lord, then, then you know, these questions that we're asking, shouldn't Christians already know the answers to all of these questions? And I would say that the answer to that is no. Some I would say absolutely, but some I would say not so much. Because as Christians, even though we have faith, we still ask hard questions sometimes, don't we, when it comes to the Lord. As a matter of fact, if you stop and think about it, it wouldn't really be faith if there weren't questions. That's why it is faith, because we are willing to ask questions. And so the first wonder in our series that we're going to be asking is this. Why do I exist? Why do I exist? And I want to start this morning by considering this thought. That is the makings of a meaningless life. The makings of a meaningless life. So if you have your Bibles there in Titus chapter 3, let's look at verses 3 through 5. The Bible says, For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior towards man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Bible teaches that it is possible for people to live a meaningless life. As we see here, the Bible describes someone who is foolish, someone who is deceived, living for lust and pleasure, living in envy and malice and hate. And the truth of the matter is, it is possible for us to wander through this life, hold down a job that you may or may not hate, pay your taxes, live for the weekends, and yet never truly accomplish anything meaningful with your life. It certainly is possible. I believe that many people want to do something profound with their life, but over time they are beaten down by circumstances and it just seems easier to settle into a life that doesn't really make much of a difference. Jesus Christ lived his life with a purpose. I mean, every day when Jesus woke up, he was driven by one purpose. I want you to take your Bibles and move forward to 1 John chapter 3, if you don't mind. 1 John chapter 3.
And when I say that, that Jesus was driven, I, I just, you know, this is just me in, in my mind's eye, but I just kind of believe that, that Jesus, when he woke up in the morning, man, he just, he was, he was ready to go. He was energized. He was excited because of the purpose God had given to him. So what was his purpose? 1 John 3, verses 7 and 8, the Bible says, Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. Look at this. For the purpose, uh, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That, that is his purpose. That is the purpose of our Lord. You say, well, what were the works of the devil? Well, we understand that the devil uh, tempted Eve and, and, and then Eve and Adam, they sinned against God. Uh, and for that, uh, they, they took on a fallen nature. And the devil helped to bring all of that about. And because of that, you know, man has had to live in that fallen state. And then we think of all of the misery that the enemy has caused over the years, all of, all of the lies, all of the destruction. And Jesus said, my purpose for coming to this earth was to destroy the works of the devil. His purpose was to come and to redeem you and to redeem me because we were lost. Hey, that's exciting. What a great purpose. What a great meaning to have for your life. During his earthly ministry, Jesus accomplished more in three years than most people accomplish in a lifetime. He was a man on a mission, and he knew that his life was filled with meaning. So let me ask us a question this morning. Are you living a life of meaning? Or are you wondering why you were ever born in the first place? Where are you at? That's a good question to ask. Where are we at? Where do we see ourselves on that spectrum? Man, I get up in the morning and I'm excited because I know that I have meaning for my life and I'm excited to get out and continue to live the purpose that God has given me or I get up in the morning and here we go again, you know, and life is such a drudgery and, and everything is so mundane and, I mean, what is it for, for you? We all need to ask ourselves that question. Shortly before his death, Mark Twain wrote this. Listen to this. He said, a myriad of men are born. They labor and sweat and struggle. They squabble and scold and fight. They scramble for little mean advantages over each other. Age creeps upon them. Infirmities follow. Those they love are taken from them. And the joy of life is turned to aching grief. It, talking about the release, comes at last. The only unpoisoned gift that earth ever had for them. And they vanish from a world where they were of no consequence. A world which will lament them for a day and forget them forever. That sounds pretty dark and depressing, doesn't it? But can I tell you something? That is the truth for every person if they do not have a meaning and a purpose for their life. That is true for every person if they do not truly understand why they exist. And really, you know, you stop and think about it. Whatever we are doing, it's not going to last forever if we're not doing it for the right reasons and with the right motives. Everything that we do in this world will be forgotten along with any and every accomplishments that you ever had. Dr. James Dobson, in his remarks at Liberty University, recounted that when he was 18 years old, he dreamed of seeing his name on a tennis trophy in the trophy case at Point Loma Nazarene University. 
the school where he earned his first degree. His dream was ultimately realized, and his name was engraved on that tennis trophy. But 15 years after that accomplishment, he received a phone call from a friend who told him that he found that trophy in the dumpster behind one of the university's administration buildings. The friend refurbished the trophy and made sure that Dobson got it. As he showed off his prized possession to the students, Dobson said, Listen, what I learned, uh, what I learned from that was a very valuable lesson. I learned that if you live long enough, life will trash your trophies. I don't care what they are. Whatever your accomplishments, whatever you think is the most important thing that you've ever done, sooner or later, it won't matter. Now, there might be some people out today in the congregation, and you would say, Pastor, I, I just don't know if I believe that. I mean, that sounds horrible. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm working hard. I'm doing a lot of things, and I, I would hate to think that the things that I'm doing won't matter. Let me ask you a question. Who won the Super Bowl three years ago? And don't say whatever team Tom Brady was on, okay? Just what, who won the Super Bowl, right? Who won the World Series five years ago? Who won the NBA championship 10 years ago? Who won the Nobel Peace Prize 20 years ago? Do you know? Do you care? No. And that's, that's the thing, you know, and that's what we have to understand. But, you know, we live in the day where everything is based on me. Everything is based on what I'm doing, what I want, and, you know, take a selfie and let me put myself on social media so that everybody can, you know, wrap themselves around my life and I can be the center of everyone's universe. And it's it's going to end up being nothing. It's not going to matter. And it's important for us to understand that. Maybe you feel this way today. Maybe you're wondering if anything you're doing is making a difference. Maybe you're struggling with anxiety and depression. Maybe you've made some bad financial decisions. Maybe you've made some bad relational decisions. Maybe someone else's bad decisions are impacting your mental and emotional health. Say, Pastor, I'm, I'm having a, a difficult time. And I'm trying to figure out where I fit in the grand scheme of things. Well, whatever you're dealing with, there's one thing that you have to realize if you want to escape the meaningless life. And that leads us to a final thought today. The promise of a higher purpose. The promise of a higher purpose. Romans 8, verses 28 through 29. You can turn there if you like. Familiar portion of Scripture. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He foreknew, He also predestined to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. If your life seems to be drifting without meaning, that can all change today. Jesus came to this earth with a purpose. And that's what it says here. If you, if you look at that scripture again, for, to those who are the called according to his purpose, what, what is his purpose? Jesus has a purpose for every one of us. But Jesus came and he died on that old rugged cross for the forgiveness of our sins, he rose three days later in victory and proved that he was the Son of God and that death could not hold him. And if death could not hold Jesus, what he's trying to tell us is that death cannot hold us either if we put our trust and faith in him. That's what it's all about. Now that's exciting because we can be forgiven of every wrong thing that we've ever done. That was the purpose. But wait a minute. Wait a minute. The exciting thing to realize is that Jesus didn't just save us 
and then say, okay, I came, you know, I died, I, you know, I rose again, you believed on me, I, now I've, do, I've done all the hard lifting here, I've done all the hard work, now, now, you know, when you die, I'll, I'll see you up in heaven one day, right? Just live your life, you know, and then, but I'll see you one day in heaven. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus, Jesus died for us on the cross, and he gave us the opportunity to put our trust and faith in him so that he could be our Savior, but, but he also decided to give us a purpose for living. And I don't have to live the rest of my life and just kind of meander through life and, and, and not have any purpose, not have any plan, and live that meaningless mundane life. I can live a life filled with meaning. I can live a life filled with with purpose. So if you're asking, why do I exist? Here's the answer. You exist to glorify God with your life. Virginia prayed that just a few minutes ago up here. You and I, the reason that we were born, the reason that we exist is to glorify God. You say, well, Pastor, I, may, I might have already known that. I mean, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you know it? Because it's one thing to say that we know it and maybe kind of know it up here, but it's another thing to know it and then to live it. Because if you know it and you're living it, now when you get up in the morning and you go to that job, you don't just see the job as a job, you see that job as a mission field. And you see the people as people that God has placed around you so that you could have influence on them for the Lord Jesus Christ. I was mentioning earlier, maybe you're a stay-at-home mom. Maybe you're a homeschool mom and, and, and you're, you're raising your kids and man, it gets frustrating sometimes. And we have a dear friend back at our old church, and uh, she homeschooled her kids, and she said, you don't know how many times I just wanted to take them out and stick them on the bus. <laughs> yeah, Because teaching is hard. Teaching is hard. It's a, it's a hard job. But when you realize that you're, you're raising those kids for the kingdom, that you are, you are seeking to have... Uh, influence on them. I would say in the, in the public school system as well. You're, you're, a, you're a, a Christian and you're in the public school system. You are seeking to have influence. You are seeking to be an example to those children. Why? For the glory of God. For the glory of God. Everything that we do should be for the glory of God. Well, pastor, that shouldn't be too hard. We'll, we'll stop and think about it. That means that, that the way that I live and everything I do, I need to be asking the question, is this thing that I am doing or is this thing that I'm getting ready to do, is this something that will glorify God or is this something that would actually not glorify God? You see, it's not that easy, but it is important. It's important to understand because we tend to add stress and anxiety to our lives. Listen, because we're so worried about what other people think of us. Can I tell you something this morning? The only, th the only one we should be concerned about is what they think of us. And I'm not talking about our, our Christian testimony. I think we should have a Christian testimony. But man, the, the, the one we really be, need to be concerned about is the Lord. We get so concerned about what everybody else thinks, and you can't live that way. You will drive yourself crazy. If you, you will stress yourself out to the max if, 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 if you are living your life to try to please other people. I'm telling you right now. I, you know, I, I do my best. You know, you've always heard the, the phrase, you know, that pastors and the pastor's family lives in a fishbowl. You know, you've heard that before maybe and, and there's all of this pressure that's, that's on the pastor and, and all of that. And, and I'm, not, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen sometimes and there, there aren't instances like that. But I've got to tell you, um, 
I kind of had to decide a long time ago that, you know, I, I just have to be myself. I have to be the person that God has called me to be, and I've encouraged my, you know, my family to be, be who God has called you to be. And don't worry about trying to be something that you're not. And, and don't worry about, you know, trying to impress people. The one that we need to be concerned about, uh, uh, you know, is, is, is the Lord and making sure that the things that we do are pleasing to him because the truth of the matter is all of us are going to mess up. And all of us are going to blow it. And I promise you, if, 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 if you ever get to the place where uh, you, you think that I won't blow it, just ask Crystal, <laughs> you know, or, or my kids or something. You know, I promise you, you know, I mess up all the time. You know, we are all the same. And, and God has called us to, to glorify him. The exciting thing is that God accepts us if we've trusted Christ. But in addition, when you become God's child, we understand that God gives us his spirit. He gives us the ability to understand his word. He gives us a support team, which is our church family. And he gives us the ability to speak in his power. When you share your faith on the outside, the Holy Spirit speaks to that person that you're talking to on the inside. When we embrace God's purpose for our lives, we glorify him and we can live our lives knowing that we are not wandering, but we're right where God wants us to be. Dr. Dobson had some final remarks that day that he spoke at Liberty. And I just want to share this because I think this really sums up what we've been talking about. He says, if you want to know what will stand the test of time, I think I can tell you. Listen to this. It's what I call the end of life test. Project yourself to the end of your life, and when you're there and you're looking back, what will matter to you then? You know what will matter most, he said. What will matter most is who you loved, who loved you, and what you did in the service of the Lord. There is nothing else that will stand the test of time. But I'm not a preacher. You don't have to be a preacher. I'm not a Sunday school teacher. Maybe God didn't call you to be a Sunday school teacher. I'm not a missionary. Maybe God didn't call you to the mission field. But whatever vocation or whatever God has called you to in this life, when you decide on purpose that I'm not going to do it for myself, but I'm going to do it for the glory of God, then that is something that will last forever. Forever. And when you get to the end of this life, you'll look back, and as Dr. Dobson said, the only thing that will be important is who you loved, who loved you, and what you did for Jesus. So where are you at today? Let me just ask four questions. Four questions. Number one, do you feel like you are living a meaningful or a meaningless life? Where are you at? Okay, just trying to find out where you are. Number two, are you a people pleaser? Are you living your life for the approval of of others. Number three, are you willing to accept that God loves you and that he created you for a purpose? And number four, will you choose today to stop living for yourself and for the world and start living your life for God? Let's go to Lord in prayer. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. With heads bowed and eyes closed, Keith's going to come in just a moment. He's going to lead us in our invitation song. But I am going to ask you to stand, if you don't mind, for a moment with heads bowed and eyes closed. Because maybe you're here today and you would say, Pastor Polston, I don't want to live 
that meaningless life. But I want to live my life for the Lord. I want to know that the things that I'm doing right now, the people I love, the people who love me, and the things that I'm doing in my life, I want to know that they mean something, that they count for something. One day when I get to the end of my life, I want to know that the things that I did, that I did them for the Lord and that they mattered. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If that's your heart today, would you just slip your hand up and right back down? Pray for me, Pastor. I want to know. Yes, 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 yes. I want to know. There might be someone here today and you would say, Pastor Polston, I want to start living that meaningful life, but as I know my heart right now, I've, I've never trusted Christ as my Savior. As I know my heart right now, I'm not a Christian. But I want to be one. And listen, if you'd be willing to pray, and this is between you and God, but if you'd be willing to pray and say, Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner, but I know that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And right now I want to put my total trust and faith in Christ. I believe Jesus died. I believe that Jesus rose again. I believe that Jesus is the very Son of God, and right now I want to put my total trust and faith in him. If you'd be willing to do that, you can know today beyond a shadow of a doubt that you belong to the Lord. Keith's going to lead us in our invitation hymn. If God's touched your heart, the altar's open. I hope you would feel very comfortable to come. Keith, why don't you lead us, please? Sweet hour of rest. Hour of prayer that calls me from a world of care and bids me at my Father's throne makes all my wants and wishes known in sea. Thank you for being here today and for joining us in worship. I hope you have received a word from the Lord that you can take something home uh, from our service here today, uh, that you have received a blessing from the Lord. And uh, may God provide opportunities for us now to be, go and be the church, to love people, and to share Christ with people. So let's go in prayer as we dismiss. <coughs> Dearly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come and worship together as the body of Christ, Lord. We thank you for every family that, in person that is represented here today, Lord, and I just ask your blessings upon their life this week. God, that you would just, um, just make your, uh, your presence evident in their life as they go into the workplaces and they go into just day-to-day -day life, Lord. Provide opportunities for us to love people, to share Jesus with people, uh, and may we be obedient, God, and may we be praying for that person, that one that we are focused on during this season in our church, Lord, and um, that we would just be finding new ways to bless them, to, to, to pray for them, and uh, to reach out to them. And Lord, may you do a mighty work in, in the people in this room right now, God, that uh, people would say, what's going on at Hell's Four? Because something, something exciting is happening there. I got to go check it out, uh, Lord. So I just ask your blessings upon our church, our ministries of this church, and everybody in this room. Uh, bless us as we go our separate ways. In Jesus' name, amen.